right here, and we start prying away right at each of the clip locations such that the door panel will come off cleanly. Now, if we break these clips, that's okay. I have tons of those clips. We can always replace them, but I wanna make sure that I don't rip the door panel, so you have to make sure that you do the job right. Okay, now that you got all of these clips removed, now it's just a matter of prying up and out. And the whole door panel comes out. I managed to do this perfectly without any damage to clips or the door panel. And look how clean this is. This is an absolutely perfect, clean example. No delamination of the lines. It's got that same sheen. In fact, this car was repainted and when they repainted it, they did not remove the door, <clears throat> the door cards. This is the very first time, probably in this M3's life, that I'm taking the door cards off. I've done enough of these to know um, if it's been removed before, and everything was kind of like sealed on, you know, pressed together, difficult to remove, um, and it was because it's just been, you know, 31 years of just sitting in the same position. So I just, I know the difference, and this has never been removed before. Another sign that this car has been repainted and poorly prepped, in fact, is because when you've peeled back the windshield gasket, you'll find that there is actually a line of demarcation between the old paint and the new paint. You can tell the difference because there is a different sheen, different texture, different color, different shade of that black, and you just know that they taped off the windshield as opposed to removing the gasket, removing the windshield, and properly repainting this car. So now we come to a really critical part in the deconstruction of this M3, and that is the removal of the glass. Now glass is really, really expensive, especially for an NLA M3. In this case, we definitely need to remove the front windshield because we're going to be replacing the lower windshield trim. And the reason is, is not because of rust. This car does not have any rust. The reason is, is because the area down below the windshield wiper has actually some waves and bends. I think I showed you in the first video. Uh, so we need to replace this whole piece. We're gonna be cutting it off and drilling out all the appropriate spot welds in the right locations. We're gonna be putting the new piece in. We also need to get the VIN number stamped on that, so we have to be very careful about how we do that, make sure we're doing it right. But in this case, we're gonna try to remove both the front and the rear glass and see how we do. We might be successful, we might not. Will we break anything? Will we wanna take that chance? I don't know. We have success, at least for the front. Check this out. This whole piece just kind of comes on up, which is great. So the front windshield actually was able to be, be removed without an issue. And you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about here with the wave. It just, it looks like it's been played around with. Um, and that could part possibly be due to the uh, installation of the single wiper. Um, but obviously we're gonna be going to a dual wiper setup again. So this piece is going to get removed. And actually, if you look underneath here, there actually was some rust. Um, down below. So replacing this piece, let me see, see that little hole there? Replacing this piece actually is a good, good idea. Um, and uh, th this is a very common location for uh, rust to occur, guys. So always keep, in, keep that in mind when you're uh, removing the windshield for whatever reason. But we do need to replace this part. Let's take a look at the rear. How Oops, we didn't do the rear. There's reasons for that. First of all, this is very, very expensive. I'm actually uh, looking it up right now. We just didn't want to take the chance to remove the rear windshield. This is aluminum trim um, that also is about three or 400 bucks just for the two pieces with the center locking strip. So this is actually really expensive too. Um, and uh, I'm actually assessing whether or not we need to remove it if we want to do the repaint. Um, and uh, it seems like this curve here on the trunk piece goes really, really deep. So I'm actually going to turn to the forums on this to see if I can get some help on how to remove this safely. And uh, if it's possible, um, if, it's, if, something, if somebody's actually done that before, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously going to take uh, whatever advice I can get. So more on the rear later, but for now we have enough to focus on on the front. And we can also remove the rear, the rear uh, window pieces as well, and we can start working on the interior. All right, so a little bit of time has elapsed since we last worked on this E30 M3. As you can see, I got rid of the door panels. I'm starting to take off the uh, 